President Trump tweeted today, Sadly, it looks like Mexico's police and military are unable to stop the caravan heading to the southern border of the United States. Criminals and unknown Middle Easterners are mixed in. I have alerted Border Patrol and military that this is a national emergency. We must change these laws. Every time we see these caravans or people illegally coming towards the United States borders or attempting to come into our country illegally, think of the blame on the Democrats for not giving us the votes to change our pathetic immigration laws. Remember the midterms. This is so unfair to those who come in legally. Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador were not able to do the job of stopping people from leaving their country and coming illegally to the United States. Well, at least on a massive scale. We will now begin cutting off those countries or substantially reducing those countries' funding the massive foreign aid routinely given to them. First up tonight, though, national correspondent William Lajeunesse in southern Mexico, just north of the Guatemalan border. Good evening, William. Well, good morning, or excuse me, good evening, Brett. I'll tell you right now that this caravan, it stretches for miles in both directions below. Today, the heat was extreme. The walk was exhausting. There were a lot of ambulances, there were a lot of crying babies, a lot of people nursing blisters on their feet. But honestly, this is only day two in Mexico, and it promises to be a long haul ahead for those who take it. A showdown heading towards the U.S. border as the migrant caravan began moving some 25 miles north Monday, helped by Mexicans offering food, water, and transportation. You know, like these people's doing right now, look at them, they got good hearts. Since leaving Honduras last week, organizers say the group doubled in size to more than 7,000. Some applied for asylum here, but most say they want to enter the U.S., legally or not, despite the president's warning. This is not going to be easy. Well, you know, it's a lot of people. I don't think he's going to be able to stop a lot, everybody. After first telling President Trump it would stop the caravan, Mexico reversed course, overwhelmed by sheer numbers and wanting to avoid a violent confrontation. The immigrants also know the U.S. cannot catch or deport them all, releasing hundreds of Central Americans each day because of court decisions and a lack of shelter space. I don't know if we're going we're gonna to apply for asylum, you know, that depends if we can get there first, you know, but uh, my, my dream is get through the border. That remains some 1,400 miles away or roughly a three-month walk. Migrants hope buses or the train will cut that time in half. Their final destination, we're told, California, not Arizona or Texas. Mexico says roughly 1,000 families applied for asylum here. If approved, they can stay in Mexico to live and work. The United Nations Refugee Agency is helping process those claims, but also makes the distinction between migrants fleeing crime and poverty versus likely victims of racial, religious, or political persecution. Migrants are the ones that willingly are uh, leaving their countries to pursue a better future, as you mentioned. While refugees are people that they don't have the possibility to go back, either because they, they will face death or, or retaliation. What we're honestly witnessing here, Brett, is an exodus from Honduras, Guatemala, and even some from El Salvador. The people there say they have uh, basically, the, because of poverty, crime, and corruption, they have no hope, they have no wages, and they have nothing to lose, and that's why they continue to come. Back to you. William Lajeunesse, live along Mexico's border with Guatemala. William, thank you. Now, Newt Gingrich, former House Speaker and a Fox News contributor, um, you wrote uh, this piece uh, that calling this an attack on America. Newt, your thoughts on what we just heard from William Lajeunesse, the reporter, and Jorge Ramos on the ground as well. Well, I look, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, to use Jorge Ramos's numbers, there are at least nine or 10,000 potential people if you count the ones on the Guatemala border who want to come north. The, the easy question to ask is this. Let's say we open the border. We welcome all of them. That picture goes out across the whole planet. How big do you think the next convoy is? And, the, and then the caravan after that, and the caravan after that. And you get to the question, you're either going to control the border or you're not going to control the border. And as an American, I'm, I'm, we, have, we have the most generous legal immigration system in the world. We have over a million people a year legally right. becoming American 
are about getting American right to be in America. Most of them go on to become American citizens. So it's, a, it's a, just a dishonest lie to suggest that we don't have an, a serious immigration program that's legal. Now, the problem we have is there are a lot of folks who want to break the law. And, and if you ever had open borders, as you pointed out, the Gallup World Poll, I think the number for all of Latin America and the Caribbean was 179 million people would like to come to the U.S. It's just unsustainable. So the question becomes, what are you going to do about it? And the president, who has inherited a disastrous uh, immigration system between court orders, bad congressional laws, federal regulation, it's a total disaster. He's trying to get his right. Uh, I think it's important to stop this caravan, in part to send a signal to the rest of Latin America, no, you're not going to be allowed to come in, and in part because in the process of stopping it, we're going to learn a lot about the laws that need to be changed. And frankly, Congress, maybe in the lame duck session, ought to be challenged not to, not, not comprehensive reform, but let's take the 10 dumbest things. Let's just fix one step at a time and begin to make it possible to manage our border. Yeah. Uh, I just want to play this clip from The View today, uh, an animated conversation about this and get your thoughts. Let's play that. Is this straight up fear mongering? I mean, when did the, when did he start putting the Middle Easterners in? I are they thought walking? He was just... Are they walking here? Well, I, mean, I, I don't know. You know what? He makes up everything. He'll tell you Osama bin Laden is marching. Uh, they're referring to the fact that the president suggested that there might be some criminals, and he said that people from m unknown Middle Easterners are mixing in. Um, your reaction to that, Newt? Well, first of all, the Secretary of Homeland Security said yesterday that we have to recognize there are probably people from the cartels among the seven to 10,000, that there are probably other people who are uh, involved in, in human trafficking. Remember, a lot of those pictures you saw of, a, of a, a man and a young girl, he wasn't her father. He was the guy bringing her in to sell her into human trafficking. So let's be clear. Most of these people are just folks who'd love to get to the promised land. They'd love to have Christmas. They'd love to have a chance to live like we live. But there is a substantial set of people who are lawbreakers, who are dangerous, who are MS-13 members. And if you were a terrorist and wanted to get in the U.S. and you saw 10,000 people trying to get in the U.S., how unlikely is it that you might decide to join them? Pretty good way to get in. Uh, yeah, there's a huge upsurge. They used to have a lot of single young men crossing the border, and now, more than ever, they are arriving with a child in tow. Um, and the Department of Homeland Security, as you say, has a really hard time identifying that child and whether or not they're supposed to be with that adult, uh, which is a potentially very scary situation uh, for these young people. Newt Gingrich, thank you. Always good to see you, sir. Thank you very much for being here. This is some record crowd. And they just told me we broke the record, but we could really break it if we could get all the people that are outside in here. We'd break it by three times. But it's true what they say. Everything in Texas is just bigger. Right? It's bigger. In just 15 days, the people of Texas are going to reelect a man who has become a really good friend of mine. You know, we had our little difficulties, right? But actually, if you remember, the beginning, it was a love fest. And they kept saying the fake news back here. They kept saying. Remember, they kept saying, well, when is it going to break up? And I'd say, don't worry, it'll break up. We actually had a rally in Washington, D.C. together, and nobody could believe it. They said, what's going on? What are you doing? But we had the rally together, and then we said, you know, it's time. That's what has to happen. And it got nasty. And then it ended, and I'll tell you what, nobody has helped me more with your tax cuts, with your regulation, with all of the things that we're doing, including military and our vets than Senator Ted Cruz, nobody. He defended your jobs. He defended your borders, and we are defending that border, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. 
We are defending that border. He defends your families. He defends your faith. And we are defending together with a lot of other great Republicans your freedom. Now, early voting is now underway. So get out there and vote. It is underway as we speak. If you'd like to leave now, go ahead. Anybody want to leave now? Go vote. Come back. Get behind about 50,000 people outside who we love. And we put big screens out for them. Let's wave to them. Wave. But I will say you got a better location. Your location's better.